Clinicians often face a challenge when identifying pigmented tissue in the mouth. The pigmentation of the mucosa can vary greatly, appearing focal or as a widespread diffuse discoloration. These pigmentations can also take different shapes, ranging from a small nodular growth to a large noticeable mass. This video explores the thought processes dentists use to diagnose pigmented lesions in the oral cavity. Pigmented lesions come in two main categories, focal and multifocal or diffuse. When encountering a focal pigmented lesion in the mouth, dentists consider three key questions. These are, is it a bluish gray macule located next to an amalgam restoration? Is it a solitary pigmented papule or nodule? Is the lesion a solitary pigmented one? Now, amongst the three questions, if the answer to the first question is yes, meaning it's a bluish gray macule next to an amalgam restoration, a dental radiograph is recommended. The dentist then checks the radiograph for the presence of metallic particles. If metallic particles are observed, then the diagnosis is likely an amalgam tattoo. If no metallic particles are seen, a biopsy is advised to definitely confirm or rule out an amalgam tattoo. Now let us assume the answer to the second question is yes, meaning it's a solitary pigmented papule or nodule. In such a scenario, a biopsy is typically recommended. It's important to note that these lesions can appear on the gingiva, palate, labial mucosa or buccal mucosa. Following the biopsy, four main confirmed diagnoses are possible. These are oral melanotic macule, melanoma, pigmented nevus, melanoacanthoma. Now, if the answer to the third question is yes, meaning it's a solitary pigmented macule, the same protocol as the second question applies, a biopsy is typically recommended and the four possible confirmed diagnoses remain the same. Now let's consider multifocal or diffuse pigmented lesions. The first step involves assessing the patient's skin complexion. It could be either a dark complexion or light complexion. If the patient has a dark complexion and is otherwise healthy, the dentist concludes the lesion is physiologic pigmentation. This means the pigmentation is a normal variation due to increased melanin production and doesn't require further treatment. Now for patients with dark complexion who are not in good health or for patients with light complexion, further evaluation is necessary to determine the cause. Here are nine potential causes to consider. Intake of medications with melanogenetic potential, smoking, lichen planus, intraoral or perioral macules, thyrotoxicosis, hyperbilirubinemia, pituitary tumor or hyperadrenocortism, low serum cortisol, megaloblastic anemia or peripheral neuropathy. The first step in evaluating patients with multifocal or diffuse pigmentation, especially those with light complexions or underlying health conditions involves asking about their medication history. Typically, an inquiry about medicines known to stimulate melanin pigmentation is made. Given below is a table of these medicines that potentially cause pigmentation. Feel free to take a screenshot. If the patient acknowledges taking any medications, it raises the possibility of drug-induced melanosis. However, it's important to perform a thorough evaluation to confirm this diagnosis. This involves reviewing the patient's medical history thoroughly. If possible, the medication is discontinued to see if the pigmentation resolves. Now consider the second potential cause of a positive smoking history. Then smoker's melanosis becomes a possible diagnosis. Next, let us consider a patient with multifocal or diffuse pigmentation, also having a white lesion with characteristic Wickham striae bilaterally in the oral cavity. This suggests the possibility of lichen planus. Lichen planus is an autoimmune condition that manifests with pigmentation as a secondary feature. 
The fourth possibility is the presence of intraoral or perioral macules. In such a scenario, patients are referred to a physician to rule out a condition called intestinal polyposis. This involves a medical evaluation to check for polyps in the intestines. If the patient returns with a positive finding of intestinal polyposis, then putz jaeger syndrome becomes a possible diagnosis. If intestinal polyposis is ruled out, then an alternative diagnosis of lugier hunziker syndrome is considered. lugier hunziker syndrome is a rare condition characterized by macular pigmentation that primarily affects the lips, oral mucosa, and acral areas. There are no underlying systemic abnormalities associated with this condition. Moving on to the next possibility. If a patient's medical history reveals thyrotoxicosis, then the pigmentation might be due to hyperthyroidism. This tends to resolve once treatment of the condition is completed. Next, a positive medical report for hyperbilirubinemia suggests the possible link to the systemic disease primary biliary cirrhosis. Hyperbilirubinemia also induces a yellowish discoloration of the skin, eyes and mucous membranes. Moving on to the positive medical history of hyperadrenocorticism or pituitary tumor can raise suspicion for Cushing's disease. Patients with Cushing's disease also show weight gain and the characteristic moon facies. The next possibility of the pigmentation is due to low serum cortisol levels. In such a case, Addison's disease is the diagnosis. This condition results from insufficient cortisol production by the adrenal glands. Pop quiz. And finally, a positive medical history of megaloblastic anemia suggests the possibility of vitamin B12 deficiency as a cause of the pigmented lesion. Oral manifestations associated with vitamin B12 deficiency are burning sensation, erythema, and atrophy of the oral mucosa. Let us summarize the approach to the diagnosis of oral pigmentation with two flowcharts. Feel free to take a screenshot. We have thus come to the end of this video. Hope you had fun learning with us.